Hello there, my fellow Xeno Hunters, and welcome back to yet another lore series in need of some more attention. The series in question is none other than the Death Watch, the military arm of the Inquisition's Ordo Xenos. I made more or less a dozen videos on the Death Watch in the past, yet there is still quite a bit of lore left to cover. It turns out it is indeed worth returning to older topics and giving them a fresh look. Even though we already talked about many of the so-called Death Watch specialists, today we're gonna talk about probably the most important and definitely the highest ranking one. Ladies and gentlemen, the Watch Commander or Watch Master. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about them, shall we? A Death Watch Watch Master, also referred to as Watch Commander or Master of the Vigil, is the senior most ranking Astartes officer within the Death Watch. They serve as the commanders of a Death Watch Watch Fortress or other Death Watch Headquarters installations. Their role is equivalent to that of a chapter master of a space marine chapter, save that there are many of them scattered across the galaxy in the myriad bases of the Death Watch. The Watch Masters of the Death Watch are among the most experienced space marine Xenos fighters in the entire galaxy. Prior to their secondment to the Death Watch, a Watch Commander is likely to have progressed to the rank of Captain. Some have even served as chapter masters of their own chapter. The role of Watch Commander, like any other position in the Death Watch, is, in theory, only a temporary duty. However, most of the Astartes who have taken up this position do so in the knowledge that they may never return to their chapter again. Such a vital and heavy burden is this rank. As such, the duty is a very lonely one, as the Watch Commander can see countless brothers serving under him before they return to their chapters. The process by which an individual is elevated to the rank of Watchmaster can vary from case to case, but most have simply served in the capacity of Watch Captain before. The promotion may come by default, as the previous incumbent may be killed in the line of duty and the most senior Watch Captain under his command simply takes over. Sometimes the process is driven by the Watch Captains electing one of their number to take overall command. On occasion, an Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos may make the appointment directly. This, in turn, must be ratified by the Watch Captains of the Watch Fortress in question and other Watch Commanders. In a handful of cases, a Watch Master can actually join the ranks of the Inquisition, appointing a replacement before he leaves the Watch Fortress. Watch Masters hold a great position of authority and responsibility, for they have access to records and archives otherwise only available to the senior members of the Inquisition. They have full knowledge of the terrible threats they guard against, knowledge that in most cases is only ever imparted to those in the highest echelons of power. They have the ear of the Inquisition and the Adeptus Astartes, and on their authority entire sectors may be put to the torch. They and they alone hold the access codes to the sealed vaults at the heart of every watch fortress. Even merciless Inquisitor lords treat these men with a degree of deference, for of all the Imperium's defenders, the Ordo Xenos know best how grave a burden the Watchmasters bear. On a strategic level, the Watchmasters work ceaselessly to outwit and outmaneuver the warlords of the alien races to stymie invasions before they can occur, to bring ascendant dynasties to their knees, and to wipe out parasitic species that would otherwise infest great swathes of imperial space. It speaks to their actual quality that they can actually achieve such goals in practice. Knowledge is power, after all, and they use it well. When the Watchmasters take to the field, their centuries of experience are focused to a deadly point, a weapon specifically made for the task of slaying Xenos forms. Wisdom is far from their only tool. They go to war girded in the finest Imperial war tech, the artifacts they bear so precious they would make even an Archmagos of the Mechanicum weep tears of envy. Just like the hero of the ancient people was given the keys to the city, the Watchmaster is given the key to humanity's domain. The Clavis, a wrist-worn repository of machine spirits from the Dark Age of Technology, that can open any door and, in theory, take control of any Imperial machine. 
The Watchmasters are clad in precious masterpieces of the Artificer's art, each a formidable and ornate suit of armor which incorporates an iron halo, a device which projects around its wearer a field of protective energy. They also carry the fabled Guardian Spear, symbolic of their role of Sentinel. This is a sign of great trust, for it is the same weapon borne by the Emperor's personal warrior elite, the Custodian Guard, yet modified to fire the signature bolt shells of the Death Watch. When a Watchmaster joins the fight on the front line, he cuts down the foe with a cold precision that leaves monsters and tyrants alike slain in his wake. Thus, on a more technical level, the war gear available to one of these fellows can include Artificer Armor, Optional Terminator Armor, The Iron Halo, The Guardian Spear, Bolter, Bolt Pistol or Chainsword as replacement for the Guardian Spear, The Clavis, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades and other Death Watch Specialty Grenades. Optional war gear can include Storm Bolter when in Terminator Armor, Combi weapons like the Combi Flamer, Combi Melta or Combi Plasma Gun, Close combat weapons like the Power Sword, Lightning Claw, Storm Shield, Power Fist, Relic Blade or Thunder Hammer, Melta Bombs, Digital Weapons and an Auxiliary Grenade Launcher. Some famous Watch Commanders of the Death Watch include Watch Commander Mordegale This guy is a quick and decisive commander of men, with a natural charisma bound to a terrifying skill in battle. A blood angel by origin, Mordegale is a paragon of the qualities and traditions of his chapter. His features are sharp and handsome, as if cut from a pale stone statue of an imperial saint, while his eyes burn with an almost feverish intensity. He delights in the perfection of all his undertakings, from practice in the martial disciplines to the contemplation on the future implications on all things that bear on his sacred duty. For over five centuries, Mordegale has served the Emperor and the Chapter. On three occasions, he has taken up the duty of serving in the Death Watch. One of these past terms of service was in the Jericho Reach itself. Mordegale's current vigil has lasted over five decades, and has seen him achieve the honor of being named Master of the Vigil a little more than a decade ago. During this time, Mordegale has seen things change within the Jericho Reach. The implications of the opening of the Warp Gate have altered the situation tremendously. The launch of the Achilles Crusade concerns him greatly too, as he sees the possibility of a greater disaster being created from a war prosecuted through ignorance and arrogance. He sees the encroaching threat of the Tyranids in much the same light, quite apart from the terrible danger they represent in and of themselves. Watchmaster Alephresis this guy is a member of the Nova Marines chapter, who currently serves as the Watchmaster in the Death Watch. He commands the Bale Fortress, a watch fortress that is perhaps the last bulwark that can stop Wa Naxlash from capsizing the Fresnia sector. Watchmaster Mordelai Mordelai is a humorless member of the Imperial Fists, serving as the current Watchmaster of Watch Fortress Talasa Prime. He is well known as being a proponent of the Malleus Tactics War Doctrine, and the kill teams he commands have been thoroughly tested against the Xeno species that encroach upon the borders of Ultramar. As a result, Mordelai has earned the long-standing trust of the Ultramarines Chapter Master Marnius Kalgar. Watchmaster Vadrian Shinol This guy is the Watchmaster of Watcher Keep. In the wake of the Great Rift's formation, Shinol has seen an increase of Xenophiles within the Imperium, who feel that since Xenos are also threatened by the forces of Chaos, the Imperium should fight alongside them. The Watchmaster considers these people to be nothing but heretics, who would foolishly have the Imperium put its trust in monsters that would gladly plunge their blades into its back. Shinol has declared that there can be no tolerance, no compromise and no peace with them. There can be only war against the enemies of mankind. Watchmaster Astaran Kor Astaran Kor is the current Death Watch Watchmaster of Fort Obsidus, 
and following the admittance of primary space marines into the Death Watch, following the opening of the Great Rift, he has proven especially adept in the deployment of the Repulsor Grav Tanks. The skill has led to the defeat of the speed cults of Wa Waz Daka, as well as several other recent orc attacks. Watchmaster Vilnus This guy is the current Watchmaster of Watch Fortress Halt Mode. When the Watch Fortress began receiving many reports of ships disappearing near the Tiamat system, Vilnus sent out a kill team, led by Watch Sergeant Gunheim, to investigate the system held by High Fleet Tiamat. Though the kill team was able to infiltrate the star system, they soon met with disaster, and they were killed on the jungle world of Xyaphoria. The starship of the kill team returned to the Watch Fortress, but it bore only a final Vox transmission by Gunheim, warning of a nightmarish organic structure that they had discovered on the surface of the planet. The Watch Sergeant reported that it spanned an entire continent, and when they approached it, the structure pulsed and sent out a tsunami of psychic energy. This then caused the death of the Librarian, which alerted the High Fleet to their presence. The kill team was torn apart by a sudden onslaught of Tyranids. Once Vilnus had finished with the message, he had sent it out to the Ordo Xenos, and it eventually reached the ears of the excommunicated Inquisitor Kryptmon. The Inquisitor then traveled to Watch Fortress Halt Mode, and Vilnus agreed to meet with him. As they spoke, Kryptman shared his own grim theories regarding the Xeno structure and High Fleet Tiamat. Together, the two began to formulate a plan that would see the utter destruction of whatever new horror the Tyranids were breeding in the Tiamat system. This would actually make for a pretty good novel plot, if there isn't one already. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Death Watch Watch Commander slash Watch Master for today. As you have heard, these fellows are very powerful individuals, with a lot more reach and resources than even a regular chapter master. Would you like to be a Death Watch Watch Master? What new policies would you bring to the Death Watch? Feel free to share your thoughts, ideas, or opinions on this topic in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects